Hi everyone. This is um, a simultaneous game, which was um, Nigel Short given the simultaneous exhibition, which was where we played 30 juniors in Bolton on the 19th of February 2011. And his opponent in this game is Free Seas player Daniel Abbas, who we have seen um, some of his game games before. Short um, had white odds on all the boards. He was playing 30 at once, like I just said, and um, he will be trying to wipe out as many as quick as possible. Let's see how he did in this game, anyway. E4. Short always plays, uh, well, usually plays E4, even at Grandmaster level. E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5, which he also plays at Grandmaster level a lot. A6, Bishop A4. If Bishop takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e5, then queen d4 wins the pawn back with interest due to the bishop pair. Bishop a4, knight f6. Um, if you're wondering when black should play b5 in a way or pairs, um, it's usually when white is protected his e4 pawn so then he can safely take the e5 pawn via bishop takes c6 and knight takes e5 when black is ready to guard f7 by castling because once the bishop is shunted to b3 um, it, is, it is pointing at f7 so um, he needs to be defended and if there is some kind of tactical justification e.g. the Noah's Ark trap which we'll see an example of later in a variation castles b5, a slightly unusual move order this is and it allows one, an extra option which is d4 which is very sharp and in fact Daniel immediately goes wrong by taking safest move is d6 after which would come c3 if knight takes e4 by the way bishop d5 wins a piece h3 Bishop takes, Queen takes, E takes D4 and Queen G3. And this leads to a position where Black is going to be up a pawn but facing a lot of pressure. However, it can be neutralised, but White does have enough compensation. However, however this term is a good line and should lead to equality for Black, but however, well another bad move would be Knight takes D4, which allows Knight takes D4. E takes d4, e5, knight g8, and queen f3, which menaces mate on f7 and the rook on a8. However, shorts plays e5, and already um, black is in trouble. By the way, if knight takes d4 here, this loses to knight takes d4, queen takes d4, c5. And once the queen moves, c4 is going to win the bishop, which is an example of the Noah's Ark trap, which is when a white bishop in the Royal Lopez is trapped by pawns on c4, b5, and a6. So e5, knight e4, and now bishop d5. The only move here really is knight c5, but after knight takes d4, bishop b7, knight f5, castles, queen g4 g6 and rook e1 um white has got a very strong initiative on the king's side and this should prove decisive however this is better than the game because in the game knight g5 was played and amazingly enough sharp misses a very easy forced win already let me move um, 10 i'll give you five seconds to spot it or you may want to stop the video five four three two one the simple moves is knight takes g5 bishop takes g5 and because f7 is very weak queen h5 and save black blocks with g6 then queen takes g5 and white is a piece up and winning and i don't think short actually would have um, let him off because He'll, he'll want to like wipe out as many as quick as possible because he's playing that many people. He, he'd be merciless. So I, I just think he missed it because I suppose he was probably like bogged down in some other game. Knight, t knight takes d4. Regaining the pawn with a very, very strong position. 
Bishop b7, knight f5, castles, rook e1. This shows that um, one slip in the opening, especially in open games, can lead to this sort of trouble. Knight a5 takes, knight takes, queen g4, knight e6, knight c3. Um, bishop h6 practically wins here because there is three pieces on g7 and if g6 then the rook hangs. Knight a5 was played. If king h8 could have stopped all this, although white is still much better. Knight a5, knight d5. Now the e7 bishop comes under attack, so knight c6, and now bishop h6. g6, knight takes e7 check, knight takes e7, knight f6 check. King h8, and now white has two move queen moves here. One, and sharp plays the inferior move once again. And it, there is one move that can force black to resign immediately, and there is one that allows a bit more resistance, although it is still winning. See if can, there's queen h4 and queen h3. Which one's better? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Better is queen h3. Because after, say, rook g8, knight takes h7, wins. The difference is, with the queen on h4, is that the, knight, the queen can be hit by a knight f5 at the critical point. So after rook g8, here Short decided to um, win the exchange because if knight takes f h7, then because the queen is on h4, it can be hit by knight f5. And after queen h3, queen h4. Although white will end up a clear pawn up in the end game, it will take time to win. And Short term um, will want to um, win as quick as possible. So he, he decides to grab the um, rook instead. King takes g8, rook a d1. Queen e8, threatening knight f5 without the queens coming off, so g4. Rook b8, rook e3, preparing rook h3, bishop g5 and queen takes h7 mate. c6, a bit slow this, rook h3. Uh, knight d5, bishop g5. Knight takes g5, queen takes g5, queen f8, c3, and rook e8. And why is the exchange up with a very good position here? However, it still needs a bit of technique to win. But Shot is a grandmaster, so therefore this will happen. f4, now the pawns are joining in the attack because black's that passive, um, there isn't anything you can do to it, get at the white king. Queen g7, rook f1. A5, rook f3, knight c7. And now Short decides to um, simplify now into a winning endgame, which happens after this continuation. The last chance here was knight c7, preparing knight d5. But again, um, it's still winning for white, but at least um, there'd be some chances for like, any more tactical accidents for Short. But instead, knight f8 allows Short to win easily because the knight is passive. And now um, I was thinking he might um, play, um, in fact he might play, yeah he played rook e3, so he might want to play f5 now, e5 is defended, and after king g8, f5 occurred. And the rest of the game is just a matter of technique, and he is a grandmaster, so his technique is therefore very good. And I'll just show you the, re the remaining few moves. You see these pawns are just crushing black. The extra exchange is too much. And black hasn't got an active plan. He decides to try and break out now before we are squashed, but this is a bad mistake. But there was nothing else anyway, he was losing anyway. Now um, the pawn d7 is going. Now the rook's coming off. And now the h6 pawn is going. And white is going to be two pawns and the exchange up. Plus the knight is kind of a little bit trapped. And Daniel decides to throw in the towel here. Well, um, it seems that that opening completely threw him. Um, if, if it hadn't been for the opening, he might have had a good chance then. Because the shot did make some mistakes in that game that he wouldn't have made if he was playing like, over the board. Um, which, But... Um, 
Yeah, but yeah, we managed to. F it happened to both of them during the game. So we um, could do some study on um, the centre attack. Shot also is known to um, play the um, King's Gambit occasionally as well. But he generally plays the Royal Lopez and um, he used the uh, Warwick attack, which is where you play Queen E2 on move 6 to defeat Karpov, just to get to the uh, World Championship match against Kasparov. Which he um, got trounced in the end, but that was Kasparov. Um, short um, after Michael Adams is the second highest um, rated player in the country. He's on 2 and a half out of 3 at the, in the British Championships at the moment and has a good chance of winning. Um, he's been around a, lo around a long time, like he won the Master game um, when he was like 15 or something. He was, he was a child prodigy, was the youngest Grandmaster in the world at the time. And he's had a very long career that he's still um, continuing. And um, I think Daniel's done quite good here. Um, he lasted 48 moves. And um, if you had, and also if you had to fall for that um, opening mistake because because of Sharp making a couple of mistakes after. Because in a symbol, they're always going to make mistakes because of all the games you have to keep up with. And he, he only has, he has a few seconds per move. Whereas um, Daniel had um, a few minutes per move, especially at the start. Anyway, I hope you um, enjoyed this game, um, having, a, having a look at Nigel Short playing. I'm sure you all like him. And um, please leave any comments and thoughts. Um, subscribe to see some uh, more amazing chess videos. The fastest one, the fastest. This channel is faster growing than China's economy at the moment. And um, thanks very much and see you on YouTube.